So in this example, there's a couple things we can do. Um, we can follow the exact same procedure that I did last time. We can identify, look at all the denominators, and develop, and develop a least common uh, multiple of our denominators, which in this case is going to be an expression x times x minus 2. Then I can multiply the numerator and the denominator um, by x times x minus 2. That's what I did um, when I showed you guys the solutions up here. However, that kind of came, I had to do a, some little bit more math and then I had to factor it. And I kind of realized actually applying that method, while sometimes that is the fastest way, in this, in this problem, that really wasn't the best method, at least in, in my opinion. So I decided to do it a different way. And what I decided to do, uh, or what I'm going to show you in this way, is I'm just going to work it a different way. So if you decide you want to try it that way, there's nothing wrong with it. You're, you're going to get the exact same answer. However, what I um, what I'm going to decide to do is, you can see I have a fraction in my numerator, and then I have a fraction plus a number in my denominator. I'm going to want to combine that to be a fraction in the denominator. So to do that, I have to have common denominators. So I'm going to multiply by x over x. So therefore, I obtain 3 over x minus 2 in my numerator, and then 6 over x plus 5x over x. Yes? Then I can combine these in my denominator. Oops. 6 plus 5x over x. All right, so the whole purpose, the reason why I want to do that, is to go back to an understanding of dividing fractions. The majority of you remember that if you have a fraction divided by another fraction, and it looks like this, back in the day, we just kind of realized, well, instead of dividing fractions, we'll just rewrite it as its re or rewrite it as a product of its reciprocal. Right? So to divide fractions, you just multiply by the reciprocal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if I rewrote the fraction like this, it's the exact same thing. 1 fourth divided by 3 fifths really looks like this. 1 fourth divided by 3 fifths. And the reason why you're multiplying by reciprocal is because you want your denominator to be 1. So you multiply by 5 thirds, multiply by 5 thirds. As long as you multiply the same number on top and bottom, you have an equivalent fraction. Any number multiplied by its reciprocal is 1. And then you just have your expression which ends up, in this case, equaling 5 over 12. OK, so does everybody kind of see, see that? So in this case, you guys can see this looks crazy. But in reality, all it is is a fraction divided by another fraction. It's the same thing, fraction divided by a fraction. So all we need to do is just multiply by the reciprocal of our denominator in the top and the bottom. And I like this method because I don't really have to expand everything. I can just kind of leave it in factored form. Anything multiplied by its, uh, anything multiplied out or multiplied by its reciprocal is going to go to 1. And then obviously we could expand this out. But when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply your numerator times your numerator and your denominator times your denominator. So this answer is acceptable. You don't need to expand uh, the denominator. But obviously, if you have a multiple choice you know, question or something like that, and it is expanded, then obviously you'd want to do the math to expand that. 